I've been having some internet issues, so I need to know if you guys can uh, see me all right. My last few attempts didn't go so well. Give you guys a little bit of a scope where I'm hanging out. What's going on, Johnny? So we got this thing working a little bit. So I think it's getting better now. I was wondering, the first time I was on the live stream, the internet only had like a meg of upload and download, but I think we got that fixed. What's going on, Alan? I'm gonna give you guys a uh, nice little spot. Yeah, can you turn up a little bit? Sweet. Look, look, can you turn up a little bit more? Right here. Yeah, that's good. Sweet. Oh, out here. All right, so, yeah, very good night's sleep. So I'm bringing you the crypto market update and news from Tagatai. This is a Scala, so you can see a little bit of the inside of this hotel right here. Nice little Infinity pool, real dope spot. As nice as this spot is, the place I'm staying tomorrow night's a lot nicer. So these places out here in paradise, it's great. Anyways, so I wanted to talk about a few things, so I'm not gonna stay on the stream uh, as long as I was doing on my 20 to 30 minute uh, version. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kinda go over some of the things I was uh, looking at when I was looking at the market today. Um, the top trading pair was uh, Bitcoin Cash to the Korean uh, won, I believe it is, or whatever the Korean currency is, had a 500 million in trading. So it was the number one pair, uh, number one exchange. So Bitcoin Cash it volumes, even though if you look at the total overall market, like they were only doing about 15% when I was checking on CoinMarketCap a little bit earlier. earlier. But uh, 500 million in trading in the Korean market for Bitcoin Cash is you're seeing a lot of people in America or in other parts of the world that are kind of uh, very um, pessimistic or you know just derogatory towards Bitcoin Cash. It has really taken off and um, exploded in these uh, these Asian exchanges. So Bitthumb and Bitfinex total are doing two billion in trading as the the weekend. You know, really it kind of kicked off here on Sunday. It seemed like there was a lot of volume being traded in the top three, uh, the big three, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin and Ethereum, the three with the largest uh, market caps. You also saw uh, Lisk and Quantum just recently have now become billion dollar market coins. So that is um, uh, 13 billion dollar market coins. If you're looking at coin market cap, you could say 14 if you wanted to include uh, BitConnect in that mix. Um, but uh, yeah, $620, uh, or $620 million market cap with BitConnect. 580 was what they uh, got knocked down to when they redid the circulating supply. So they're starting to kind of slowly climb. They don't have as many coins that are kind of being in, in circulation to, um, to, uh, to trade. I'm gonna set this down here, just one sec. Yeah, okay. So we've seen also a, uh, a new all-time high with the overall market cap with uh, the cryptocurrency markets at about $238 um, billion, billion. It's, um, you know, it's continuing to climb and you've also got um, some of the other things I guess I was noticing was uh, you're seeing 40% um, of the trading volume in the largest exchange 
is uh, is in the Bitcoin Cash pair in in Bitfund. So it's being traded. Forty percent of the largest exchange is doing almost one point two billion in trading over the last twenty four hours. It's pretty substantial, and it's also being traded in a lot of the other top exchanges right now. Um, Neo is the one if you're looking at Bitrix and you're looking at uh, Binance. There's uh, Neo. So the uh, uh, the Asian markets in terms of um, in terms of cryptocurrencies really is the dominating force behind trading volume. And so I think that's something to take a, take a look at and really kind of respect and try to understand a little bit more and not quite be so dismissive as a lot of people and uh, a lot of people I've been following have been towards um, towards that. Like that's why I think I said on my other stream I don't really like calling things like shit coins, especially when you don't really know a whole lot about the technology, you don't know much about it. It may not have a, a big market cap, but um, but that's that's something to keep keep in mind. I'm doing these so late, they don't really come in in the States. So what's your business there, or is that one just for fun? <laughs> oh, my business here is uh, just to relax, enjoy my uh, vacation. I'm enjoying the Philippines. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a good time of day. Like yesterday, it was Sunday here, and it was uh, there's kids everywhere now. It's Monday, everyone's gone. So it's nice and peaceful here. Get to hang out with my uh, camera crew. They're a little camera shy. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna stay on here. I'm just gonna keep these kind of um, short and sweet. Uh, be, be, uh, be interested to take some question if you guys have uh, uh, or some things you wanna talk about. Yeah. Asia's amazing. But uh, I'm coming back to America in uh, two days, coming back to Seattle. Uh, I'm going to be then heading up to Vancouver, BC. I'm going to be then um, heading down into California. Any update on the BitConnect card? Uh, so, I mean, it's supposedly it was supposed to be ready December 1st, it was what I had heard. Um, you know, whether whether or not they're launching. I know that if, if you're in the US, I think the US might be the last country to get it. I think it's gonna be available in a lot of the other Asian countries. It tends to be a little bit harder to get um, to get those types of cards. There's, there's more um, regulations and paperwork you need to fill out when going through the US. And so I don't think that the BitConnect card's gonna be available in America, but it should be available in a lot of other countries. And it's gonna be a master card. There was a lot of discrepancy about that. So, um, yeah, uh, you had a few people that are trying to, um, yeah, Joey Rocket spoke to Euquid. He actually did his research, so he's put out some content kind of going over that. I encourage you guys to check that out. Bitcoin's taking a bit of a dip now at 70.57. Thoughts on the, this will dip, uh, dip a little bit. I haven't checked out the markets in the last two hours. So last time I saw it was at like 8,000. Is that, is that what you guys are saying? If it dropped $1,000, that's huge. Seven, nine, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the volumes is, we're right at like 39%. So and I, I think it's gonna be um, something that people tend to kind of get into on like a Tuesday, Wednesday. So typically like um, when you're, Looking at trading it on a weekly basis, it's, it tends to um, be in your favor to get out of alt currencies and get into Bitcoin in the Tuesday, Wednesday timeframe, 
and then letting some of those coins um, drop a little bit, the altcoins, and then kind of picking them up cheap right before the weekend starts. And that's been a, a really good trading strategy for me when, um, you know, I kind of just see some things. Unless it's something that, that there's a lot of volume behind, that's probably the one that I have a little bit of an exception to. So like NEO was the one I was bringing up as, a, as an example. It's, it's still trading quite a bit. <laughs> that was the high, 81.31. I mean, I think it's gonna touch 10,000 and come back down into the low 9,000s before year's end. The Ethereum run continues. You can recall this technical setup. Is the stream working all right? Sorry guys, if it was cutting in and out there. Uh, I wanted to come back to this question. Um, the Ethereum run is now is up at 360, calling 400 at the end of this week. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I I think there was um, when you saw earlier this year, you start to see a lot of the alt currency markets were were starting to wake up. You started seeing volume behind um, cryptocurrencies in general. Uh, Bitcoin prices sort of started coming up, and then all of a sudden you saw a huge surge with Ethereum, and I think a lot of that was driven by. Um, a lot of bigger investors that have a little bit more um, faith and kind of um, not, it's, it's, it might pay a lot better to get into something like uh, the second largest cryptocurrency and kind of ride it out. And so some people, that's their strategy is just get into, uh, you know, that, uh, just get into Ethereum and hold. Um, I think the value of Ethereum has been kind of getting drained by things like, you know, Vertasum, um, you know, some of the populace, the Ethereum smart contracts. Uh, you're seeing essentially people trading their Ethereum for uh, those technologies. So in, in essence, that is going to um, be a little bit of a transfer of wealth. Uh, so I think that's why you've started to see Ethereum prices really kind of level out. Um, but, you know, I think that you, you could see a, a, a bigger surge coming here in, in the near future is, you know, people like I'm, I'm, I'm getting, you know, messages from people that I never would have thought would have started to get interested in cryptocurrencies and they hear that I'm into it and that I'm doing pretty well with it. And so they want to find out more. <laughs> we want to see more of your camera crew. <laughs> some problems so I gotta um, be careful not everyone likes to be on camera can I get some water do you talk with Glenn or Caro on a regular basis um, I talk to him I talk to him you know when I kind of need to talk to him I, I talk to him every now and then like we uh, if we're kind of in the same area like we, we were hanging out in, in Bali, we were hanging out in um, Vietnam and Thailand. So, um, you know, we're not in the same area right now. So if we're kind of in the same area, we might talk a little bit more. He's in Mexico right now. He's doing uh, some video shooting and that sort of thing. So that's kind of what he's working on. But uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll connect with him again here in the near future. Same here, man. Getting hit up on Facebook a lot lately. People are making small talk, and then they're like, oh, yeah, it's about that Bitcoin stuff. <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's like when I used to be really good at um, computers. I knew how to do certain things. Like, I uh, used to download a lot of music, used to download a lot of, um, you know, movies, things like that on the Internet when people still didn't know how to do that stuff. And so I got hit up a lot for those kinds of things. I started to get into other technology things. I figured out how to get uh, free satellite internet for a little while. That was uh, that was a cool little deal. If you um, if you knew how to like program these cards, they took that away. But for a while there, we got all the pay per view channels for free back in college. That was um, that was a nice little setup we had. My camera crew back here. 
So we can't order BitConnect card from USA or we just can't use it here. Uh, I don't think you can have it tied to a U.S. address. So uh, one of the things I was looking at doing when I got over here to Asia was getting a few addresses on um, you know, some of the different countries. So like, uh, if you have a foreign address, you can get a foreign bank account. You can, you can get um, a little bit more you know, banking type services. Uh, and that might be one as well. You could order a BitPay, or I mean, I'm sorry, a BitConnect Uquid card. Uh, just have it tied to another address. I, you know, again, I'm not, you know, entirely sure on the regulations on that, but that's one way to kind of work around the system. But as far as I know, or what I've heard, it's not going to be available in the U.S. Yeah, there's ways around it. So, the government's going to put up a fence. You just got to go around the fence. <laughs> if it's really worth it for you. I mean, a lot of people, they're not gonna go through those extra steps. Do my work out here. This is one of the most amazing views here. I'm just glad I'm able to kind of give you guys a nice little backdrop to look at while I'm hanging out here. Anyone in Asia wanna mail me my card? <laughs> I'll set up a, a service. <laughs> You just got to come visit me in Singapore. That was one of the things I was thinking about doing. Set up like a central office. And then um, seeing what the regulations. Of course, I'd have to get uh, lawyers and accountants that know some of that stuff better than I do. But if there's a need or demand for it, there's a market for it. Where am I? I'm in um, Tagatai. So it's Tagatai, it's about two hours south of Manila in the Philippines. And this uh, hotel here is called Escala. So when I was looking online, like this was, this was like, I mean, they got like the prime real estate right here. It's like right on this cliff. So you can see here, I mean, it's like, um, they've got the best spot. Amazing views. But um, there's actually a hotel right over here I'm gonna be staying at tomorrow. That, um, man, this room I'm gonna be staying at, it's gonna be amazing. So look forward to that live stream tomorrow. Um, it's, it's got better views than this place. They're right at the top of the hill. Yeah, but you guys wanna check this out, man. Coming into Philippines, you can stay in Manila. There's some awesome spots in Manila. But you get out of the city a little bit, this place is not expensive. Uh, it's about 7,000 uh, pesos. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in American, but it's not, you know, it's not overly expensive. It has a nice breakfast. Yeah. I just wish there were some more vloggers in Asia. Uh, that's one thing I'm gonna have to look at is when I'm over here, I and mean, there's a lot of new people coming into the space. Um, some of the some of the guys that I've met from the other countries that speak other languages, it's really interesting to hear their strategy and what they're doing. Uh, there's, you know, this, this guy, uh, Denny from uh, Indonesia, I was having some really interesting conversations with him, but he's really, he's really, um, he's a really good tech guy, especially with building apps and things like that on the phone, which is typically how a lot of these cultures are, um, interacting with uh, some of these platforms is through the phone. Yeah, really good English in Philippines. So Vietnam, not so much. Um, Indonesia struggles quite a bit as well, but they're a little bit better. Uh, you know, um, Thailand, again, is one that, that is really difficult. Like in Thailand, they tend to um, speak English or be able to talk to you. you know, they don't really understand. And if you're talking too fast, they, they don't, they just kind of give you a blank stare. At least that was my my experience, but um, Philippines has, has uh, really good English. It's it's um, pretty widely spoken. I haven't had any issues communicating, uh, but it is nice having uh, some Filipino translators to um, 
uh, to help me when I don't know how to say stuff or do things. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. I'm not gonna stay on too much longer. Let me know if you guys have anything else you want. Search for Philippine pesos. So it's 1.37 a night, yeah, it's worth it. The place I'm staying tomorrow is nicer and it's cheaper. Yeah, I think the stream tomorrow is going to be awesome. I'm going to I'm going to come in prepared for the stream tomorrow. I want to make I want to make that a good one. I'm going to try to do it earlier in the day too because um, it's just too beautiful this next place we're going to. I mean it is it, it the whole the glass just open up. The view is like it's way up on the cliff so it's like at like the highest point. So, uh, that's just it's just going to make for some awesome video. Looking forward to bringing that to you guys. Alrighty, with that, I think I'm going to call it a stream. It's good hanging out with you guys. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.